In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about painting gene stealer cult models. That the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel collectors. In today's video, I'm going to show you a comprehensive take of how you can paint up all your gene stealer cult models. In this series of videos, we'll produce multiple content on how we can paint up the gene stealer cult. And in today, we're going to be covering the neophytes. Subsequently, we're also going to be covering how I'm going to be painting up my aberrants as the character models in the Worm Blade Q team. And that will be launched very shortly after this video. So before we start painting, I would like you to pay the class fee of one like or one sub. And because there's no way for me to check if you have paid the class fee, it's all on your integrity. Like and sub right now. Alright, so on to the strategy. So what I'm going to be doing very differently in this video is I'm going to be focusing on this concept of stroke efficiency. So there are many ways to save time while painting your miniatures. So some of it can be using a wash base or using the airbrush. However, I don't see this concept being covered in many miniature painting videos. However, I do see this come up very often in illustration YouTubers such as Cynics, Mark Burnett, as well as Ross Draw. So this is where the inspiration has come from because they talk about simplifying shapes as well as distilling the image to make sure that it is readable. And this is particularly important when you're painting a hot army such as the Gene Steeler Cults. So with that in mind, we're going to be tackling the entire project with this strategy where we use as little strokes as possible to portray what is required on the gene stealer count models. So in this video, I'm going to be tackling many materials such as the purple gene stealer skin, the orange jumpsuit and the technical wear, as well as many other materials. However, it's all going to be starting with the base coat section. In the base coat section, we're just going to be sharing how we're going to get the base color started before we start painting any of the other materials. So welcome to the base coating section of this video. So in the base coating section, what we're going to do is we're going to just be using the brush to very neatly create a smooth base coat, which is a very key foundation of where we're going to start from. Of course, in the concept we talk about stroke efficiency, this base coat section, we're not really going to be focusing on just that. Okay, so these are the colors that I'll be using to base coat the jeans Steel Neophytes. And these GW colors will work just fine. So let's get out all these colors and let's get base coating our G Slayer Neophytes right now. Alright, we're gonna just start doing the base coat right here. So I'm gonna be doing the orange jumpsuit first and I'm gonna be using deep brown mixed in with a bit of medium orange. Just take note that the Jean Steeler card has been already base coated in some metallic color. You can always use a lead belcher spray or you can always use an airbrush. Next up, I'm going to be using a little bit of salmon mixed in with AK Gen 3 Blue Violet. I want to create a little purple tint to it, but I want to make sure that it still looks a little bit like human skin. Next up, we're going to put in a little bit of blue-grey. As you can see, we're really blitzing through the base coat section here. This is not a really important section, but I just want to make sure that every color is well covered first and I want to make sure that everything is evenly coated before I move on. At this point of time, I'm focusing on the opacity to make sure that none of the metallic colors show through. Some of the models actually have some carapace and I'm going to be using a little bit of AK Gen 3 Ocean Blue to create the base coat for the carapace areas. So these are the 2nd gen, 3rd gen gene stealers that haven't really adapted to their human forms yet but yeah, this is something that you will definitely see in your neophytes. So next up, we're going to be painting the black areas of the weapons. So these polymer cases on the weapons and I'm going to be using black mixed in with a little bit of German grey just to make sure that it's not completely black. So I'm also going to be painting the backs of the boots. Don't forget about those areas. And you just need to be as neat as you can so that you don't cover the areas that are not supposed to be black. Okay, up next, we're going to paint in a little bit of leather 
just using a straight on burnt umber from AK Gentry and we're just going to be base coating the pouches, the leather straps at the back of the boots, the straps on the thighs and the straps on the guns. And next up, we're going to be using a bit of green brown and these are going to be for the bindings. I find that the bindings are also a pretty common material that you can see on the jeans steel couch. And you want to do this for the wrappings on the guns, around the legs, across the arms, stuff like that. And lastly, I'm going to be using a medium olive green for the grenades. As you can see, at this point of time, we're just base coating and preparing for the next stage. So now that all the base coating is done, we can start to focus on the stroke efficiency. For the jeans here, cup skin, these are the colors that I'll be using. Alternatively, these GW colors will work fine. Alright, so let's get out all these colors and remember, at this point of time, I'm going to be focusing on the stroke efficiency and the different shapes that I'll be drawing on the model to distill the essential concept of how the skin is looking and how this can make the model look perfect from a 3 foot to 1 meter range to ensure the form is effectively distilled. Alright, let's get painting the skin right now. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about stroke efficiency here. Right here, I'm going to be adding in a little bit more salmon and a little bit less blue-violet just to push on the value slightly higher. But at this point of time, I'm really downgrading to my small brush, small like a size 0 here. And I'm identifying the areas that are facing the light. And this is something that I've been trying to get my mind across because all along we've been taught how to paint miniatures and we try to break everything down to geometric shapes. However, we sometimes forget that even with geometric shapes, sometimes the faces are not exposed to light. So it wouldn't make sense if the light and the layers get to these areas. So therefore, this is what I am doing right here. I'm just identifying the faces that will be facing the light. And I'm just placing the highlights in in huge blocks and focusing on shapes and distilling what is exposed to the light. At this point of time here, I'm just going to be drawing in some little details, some veins while I'm blocking out the colors so that I can refine these little details down the line without feeling too painful when I've established a very smooth blend. So now that the skin is done, the jeans the Caltes have this iconic orange jumpsuit. This orange jumpsuit probably comes from the fact that they used to be miners and they work in industrial areas which requires them to be of high visibility. At this point of time, I'm going to be remembering the same concept and the theme of the entire video which is stroke efficiency. Just remember to only use the strokes you need and the shapes you need. So these are the colours that I'll be using to paint the orange jumpsuit. Alternatively, these Games Workshop colors will work just fine. Okay, all the colors ready. Let's get painting the orange jumpsuits right now. Alright, so with the tracksuit, it's going to be even more obvious when I'm identifying the planes that are exposed to the light. Because the tracksuit has multiple folds and crevices, we've got to identify which of the folds fold into planes that hit the light. And this is my proposed summary sketch of it. Adding in a little bit more luminous flash, this is to boost the value and sort of slightly desaturate the highlight. I'm gonna be, yeah, just fundamentally refining the shapes. It's part of the time, because stroke efficiency is involved, you only have to paint in the areas that are exposed to light. If they are not exposed to light, here's where stroke efficiency comes in. Don't paint it, because they are going to be shadow anyways. Now that the orange jumpsuit is complete, we're going to be covering the other materials. I've chosen blue because blue is a complementary colour to orange. They are on opposite sides of the colour wheel and this is a simple hack. So these are the colours that I'll be using to paint the blue cloth on the jeans the no fights. Alternatively, these Games Workshop colours will work just fine. 
So let's gather up all these colors. Let's get painting the blue cloth on the jeans layer cup neophyte right now. Okay, these drapes are pretty interesting because they have pretty dramatic folds and these dramatic folds allow you to identify the planes that are exposed to light. And what I'm doing here is I'm ensuring that I'm spending as little strokes as I can and making them in shapes rather than lines. This kind of saves me a lot of time because I'm only focusing on the essential shapes rather than just trying to think about the overall shape where we start to fudge around. You just have to be very very decisive with this. Oh, you're still here? Thanks for watching the video till now. Okay, the next section we'll be covering is the carapace. Not all gene stealer neophytes are made equal because some of them are more mutated than others. So the carapace is meant to be sort of this off blue color, which happens to be this carapace color on the shell. At this point of time, remember the concept. As little strokes as possible. These are the colors that I'll be using to paint the carapace. These Games Workshop colors will work just fine. And let's get painting the carapace right now. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the carapace. I think the carapace is something interesting to talk about because there are a lot of geometric shapes and at this point of time, you're probably painting really into your model already and you probably forgot what I spoke about 10 minutes ago. However, I just want you to remember that at this point of time, please focus on the essential shapes and only use the essential brush strokes that you need which means simplifying and adjusting the lines, adjusting the shapes so that they communicate to the viewer what form this is. So it's like say for example this carapace where it looks like there are a lot of spheres because of the delta and stuff, throw that out the window. I want you to think about the planes that are facing the light and only paint those in. Then we find them and even if the shapes can appear to be a little bit more complex, Go with it, just trust in your own eye. Okay, now that most of the gene Stealer neophyte is already complete, we're going to be focusing on the black materials. I'm going to be using these colors right here to paint up the black color. Alternatively, these Games Workshop colors will work just fine. And because it's quite universal, I'm going to be covering the boots in this same material as well. But importantly, remember the concept. Okay, let's go. Okay, so now we're going to be plucking up some of the key details of the black. So for black, it's kind of complex because you want to make sure that the value is slightly higher. But you don't want to make it too high because you will make the black leather look too dusty. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change the hue by adding in a little bit of strong dark blue. By this point of time, remember stroke efficiency. First, 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 focus on the planes that are being touched on by the light the most. So areas that I really focused on, on these areas such as the hard surface areas like the gun, the individual finger joints that are facing the lights, these are all the areas that are fully coated in this area. Now we're going to add in a little bit of sand yellow to sort of like tweak the color temperature and we're going to increase the value very very slightly. At this point of time, you just be very careful with your colors. Don't jump the values too high because you don't want to make the areas discolored and look a little bit dusty. Okay, so now I'm adding in even more sand yellow into the mix. And this is my opinion, adding in some dynamic range and creating a different kind of contrast that we will have not placed on these areas because if you had just added more white in this desaturation will make the black look a lot more dusty Now it's time for the last material which is the leather. It's going to be pretty simple but remember don't let up. Remember, remember, remember the concept. These are the colors that I'll be using to paint the leather. Alternatively, these Games Workshop colors will work just fine. Okay, let's quickly get painting and finish up the leather right now. Okay, it's time for the leather straps right here and I'm going to be adding in a little bit of pale yellow and burnt umber. Notice that I'm adding in 
a lot of yellow tones into the highlights. This is because I'm painting in this Jinster Neophyte standard bearer in this desert environment. Because he's in this desert environment, I'm going to ensure that well, the warmth of the environment needs to be communicated. That's why yellow is used as the highlight color. Okay, just adding in a little bit of pale grey into the mix because we want to just increase the value now. I'm just going to pick on some of the details on the leather pouches and these are the areas that tend to catch the light. Notice that I'm only painting the areas that are facing the light source. The part of the leather pouch that is away from the light source, I deliberately kept it in a lower value so that this looks, in a sense, a little bit anime cell shaded look. Next, I'm going to add in a little bit of Black Templar just to tint the armor panels a little bit more on the chest to show a little bit of part separation. This is not relevant to the stroke efficiency part, but it's just more of me trying to do a little bit of part separation to ensure that this neophyte looks as complex and detailed as possible. So now that the entire figure has been painted, we just need to focus on the basing. We are going to be basing all the miniatures in this mass wasteland kind of look. So these are the materials that I'll be using to create this effect. So let's get basing our miniatures right now. So the fastest way to do some basing is of course, just getting all the bases out. I like to put them on paint pots so that I don't get my hands dirty. And I'm going to be using Vietnam Earth here. I don't know why it's called Vietnam Earth, but it's just this red clay color. I'm going to be basing them in a more Martian look. So just get this down and just want to do all of the bases. Now all the bases are done. I'm going to just glue on some rocks and add on some contrast. So basically I found the contrast that works the best is Dark Old Flash because it's a similar color. The purposes of adding on the rocks is not just for color. It's more of like I want to have a difference in texture to add a little bit more complexity to the models. So once the models are done, I just give the model a good dusting of Vallejo new rust all over the model, especially on the lower half. And this creates a very like dusty desert look. And there we have it. This is the finished model. And I'm really proud of my exercise on stroke efficiency and how I used only the strokes I needed for this project. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I found that this method of painting really helped me cut down a lot of painting time and I hope it will help you too. The amount of time that you save from bumbling around and trying to get the right shapes can be cut down when you spend the extra time thinking about how you're going to be designing the shapes and placing them exactly how they are intended to be. And that brings me to the end of my video. Thank you once again for watching all the way to the end. Remember, if you want to support the channel even further, head on to the Patreon and just become a Patreon. That really helps us keep the lights on. I'd like to extend a generous thank you to all my patrons out there for allowing me to continue to produce videos such as this. I know our video frequency isn't as high as they used to be. However, I still love producing videos such as this and I hope you learned something from this video. I'll see you in the next painting video. See you.